Good morning. I'd like to welcome you all here to First Christian Church. We are very glad that you have chosen to worship with us today. Um, I want to highlight a few of our announcements. The plant at the front of the uh, sanctuary is donated by Connie Wilhite, and we thank her for that. The youth group will be meeting this afternoon after worship. Uh, Thursday, board reports are due. Next Saturday, we have a busy day. You can start with breakfast at 8 o'clock uh, at Benny's. The worship committee will be meeting, and our main uh, topic will be getting ready for the Advent season. At 5 o'clock that evening, you can dress in your costume and go to Nelda's for a Halloween party. Nelda will be uh, supplying the chili and rolls, and she asks that you bring a dish to pass. They will be having hay rack rides. So please uh, take part in the things that we have going on on Saturday. On Sunday, um, there is no one signed up for Coffee Connection, so if you'd like to do that before you leave today, I'm sure it will be appreciated. And the youth group will meet again after worship next Sunday. We have board meeting on the 19th, loaves and fishes uh, on the 22nd, and then on the 24th, the annual hobo party. Again this year at the Ziegler Farm, and that's from two or from four to seven. And um, keep in touch with us all for more details. Anyone have any other announcements? Seth does. Good morning. I um, just wanted to share with you all. I caught word that um, we have a uh, superstar in our midst. Gavin Statz and the Sterling Cross Country team qualified for state this week. So we want to give a big round of applause to Gavin and Sterling Cross Country. Wish them luck at state and uh, hope that they all do well. They've had a pretty good season so far, so we're hoping that it continues. Congratulations, Gavin. Good job. That's it. Please join me in our call to worship. We gather with joy and singing at the feet of the master. Good teacher, we are here to learn the lessons of eternal life. We know the law of God. We are eager for a blessing. Come to us, Lord Jesus. Come, let us follow the Lord. Please stand for our hymn of praise this morning, step by step. Can we have our young people come forward, please? All right, I need you to do something for me as you come up. Okay, can you stand here? Okay. Riley, stand next to him. And keep, stay standing up. Here, Alan, over here. Here, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Landon, right here. Wait, wait. Gabby, can you stand right here, please? Jacob, can you come down here? You here? 
Can you come over here? All right, and then Daniel over here. All right, we're gonna we're gonna do a little um, exercise today, not like aerobics, but uh, uh, we're gonna try something out today. I want you. I want to see how we're gonna um, decide something for me. Okay, I, I, I've put something behind these doors here, right? There's a door here that says office, and then there's a door there. And there's something behind these doors. And I want to know which door you would rather go behind, okay? Ready to tell me? You, I'm going to tell you what's behind them, and you're going to choose which one you go get, okay? Behind this door over here, we have boxes and boxes. And when I say boxes, I mean a lot of boxes of candy. Okay, it's Halloween season. I've been stocking up. It's all in there. Over here on this side, behind this door, I was able to get a call through, and I've got Jesus himself behind that door. Now pick whichever door you want to go. Go ahead and go. There is, you can. <laughs> That's smart. Go ahead, go, go ahead, go ahead and go. Go ahead. Go check. You don't see Jesus? Uh oh. Did he leave on me? Oh, man. Hey, wait, you're going. Oh, I guess not. Maybe. What about. How'd Riley do? Riley, what'd you find? You found communion cups? It's kind of like candy, right? <laughs> Tastes just as good. Uh-oh, okay, well, uh, okay, go back over here. Come back up front. Oh, man. Now, you guys are really good at giving the answer you thought you were supposed to give. You know, that's a trick I learned when I was a kid in, at, at uh, Children's Message. You know, you just give the right answer every time you know what they want. Now, for a lot of you, I noticed... You, you look this way first. Why was that? Why do you think you were called? Yeah, because it's candy. But what is another reason you may think that that door was a better option than that door? Why? Because there's no way Jesus could have been in there. So it's, it's a little more realistic that candy, I could have put candy in there if I wanted to. But it's a lot harder for me to get Jesus to go stand in there and wait for you, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. You guys can sit down now if you want to. You see, it's, sometimes we are faced with things that seem a little bit outside of our understanding, or they seem a little bit hard to believe, or they seem a little hard to, to accept. You know, sometimes we're looking at, um, you know, this next step in, in life, whether it be, hey, we're starting a new school year now, or I'm about to start in this new sport, or this new activity, or, you know, this new thing in life, and it can be scary, and sometimes... Um, it seems like, how am I going to do that? And the disciples, they face the same thing. And they're facing that same thing today in our story. But what Jesus is encouraging to do is to do something that we talk about a lot in churches, and it's called a leap of faith. Does anyone know what that means, that term, a leap of faith? Huh? Always going, Always going for the candy? What do you think? I'm oh, sorry. Sorry? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. A new change, sure. But what it can mean to, to have a leap of faith is to say, you know, I don't know whether or not Jesus is going to be behind that door, and I, I know that there's a better chance that there's going to be candy, but I'm going to just have faith that maybe I will find Jesus over there. Or, you know, hey, I'm going into this new school year. I don't know that it's going to go well. I'm, I'm kind of scared, but I'm just going to trust in, in, in my family and in God and in all the things around me to help me get through this next time. And sometimes it takes a leap of faith for you to put your trust in something when, when you're scared, when you're nervous, when you're not quite sure if it's going to work out. Uh, and that's what the disciples had to do today. Jesus says, you know, here's all the things I want you to do in the future. And they're, they're scared, they're nervous. They're like, I don't know if I can do that. But they have to trust in God, trust in Jesus and what he's telling them and take that leap of faith, you know, and say, you know what, I'm just going to go for it, even though I'm not quite sure if it's going to work out. And that's something we all have to do in time to time in our lives. And you're going to find you have to do in your life as well. So keep that in mind this week as you're going forward. Let us come together and pray. God, I thank you for this morning and for gathering us together for worship. I pray that you are with each of us today, those of us who are here and those of us who are not here. Guide us forward in life. May you 
be a point of growth for these young minds. Help them to grow in life and love and happiness and help them to go forward in your name, walking along their paths of discipleship that you have laid for them. God, be with us all this day and always, and we pray this together now in Jesus' name. Amen. It is great to join in this time of worship with all of you. It is wonderful to share in all that we can share with now in this, in this time, both the, the, the songs and the, and the joys and all of the things around us. Um, it is a blessing. And so we turn now into this time of our worship, one that is um, assigned for prayer, but it is uh, more than just prayer. This is the time for us to connect with one another, uh, to connect spiritually and uh, Help us to grow as a community of faith. Help us to grow together as we lift up and we recognize all of those who are important to us, those facing extra situations or in important situations. And so we want to pray for them all today, and we pray that you are with us in this time. Turning to those concerns for your daily prayers that you have in your bulletin, we lift up today our shut-ins, Opal Dietz and Carolyn Grimm, Lorraine Little, Verda Renner, and Donna Berry. We're praying today that God is with each of them that God is providing love and support for them, and that God is walking alongside them today, giving them all that they need in this day and the days ahead. We continue to lift up those who have gone before us in life. We pray today for uh, the family of Rich Wilhite and Norma Rager as they um, are now in this time without them, and as the family continues to uh, mourn their loss and, and uh, live in this time now of grief. We pray for them today. We continue to lift up those on our special request list. Jerry Allen, um, that's Rich's cousin. Um, Jerry, I believe last I heard was they were looking at some more comfort care things for him, and, and um, unfortunately, I think a lot of the cancer is starting to take take over. Connie, do you have another update? Okay. 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 Thank you. We continue to lift up Jim Cowley. That's Vela's brother, and, and um, he's in a care facility, and we pray for him and uh, his health, and we also pray for his family, his children, and everyone who's walking alongside him. We want to lift them up today. Pray for Allie Winters today and her continued uh, chemo treatments as well as follow-up testing she's going to have uh, for her cancer. We pray that that continues to yield positive results. Uh, we want to lift up Woody King today. Um, Woody's um, kind of in a state of um, keeping things at bay and not letting their, their goal is to not let anything get worse. And he's maintaining good spirits and is doing uh, well considering. So we want to continue to lift up Woody King today. Um, we want to pray today for Amy Lawson. That is Audrey Nix's um, daughter who has um, the migraine headaches, much of the same. And actually, I, I just remembered I have a message from Audrey about that. Um, still battling the headaches, and she's doing well. Um, and Audrey is asking that we add her brother, um, Toby Hodges, to the prayer list today. And so we will add Toby. Um, he is healing after a knee surgery. Um, he was getting out of his combine and jumped a short way to the ground, and as a result, he ruptured his quads on both sides of his knees. Um, has casts on both legs now, and will be in Morrison rehab for several weeks. Um, had to have surgery and everything. So that is uh, Toby Hodges, Audrey's brother. We lift him up today. Uh, we do want to continue to pray today for Lori Johnson, praying that uh, her knee surgeries. Um, not only, you know, they're, they're finished, but um, the goal um, post-surgery is to keep any infections from returning, and so we pray that that continues to go well and she does not have any return infections. Uh, we want to lift up Cindy today. That's Connie's sister. Um, do we have an update on Cindy, Connie? Yes, she's well enough. She's out of ICU. Okay. And in the next week or so, she's going to go to rehab. I can tell you she's been fighting 
Yes. Well, we continue to pray for her in that transition and pray that um, they've got everything this time and there's not any return infections. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, and then, as, as I had mentioned before, we were lifting up Connie and the whole family as they continue to adjust to this life now without Rich with them. Outside of these prayers that I've shared, are there any other prayers that we'd like to share together? We lifted up the joy already of Gavin and the Sterling team making state, so are there other prayers? Nelda, please. Thank you. Thank you. Please, Jill. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that was your cousin, you said? Yeah. Would everyone please join with me in a time of prayer? Loving God, we come together this morning praying for your spirit to be with us. We pray, Lord, that you help each of us to feel your presence uh, through, in our hearts, in our minds, and let us know that you are here so that we may feel the comfort of you and, and, and of knowing that you are walking alongside us now and always. God, may you continue to bestow upon us blessings beyond our imagining. Lord, we confess to you that sometimes we may not recognize them all the time. We know that we sometimes get bogged down in the, in the day-to-day life, so we um, start to think that we're doing it all on our own, but Lord, we recognize as much as we can that you are constantly showering love upon us and, and providing us with blessings and guidance, and we pray that we continue to give you those thanksgivings that you are due. And God, we pray now that you are with all of those who we have lifted up together today, those who are facing um, health concerns and recoveries and procedures and all sorts of situations, we lift them up today. Our shut-ins, Lord, may you be with each of them as they go forward in life. May you walk alongside them and their family and their loved ones, their caretakers and friends, all of those who are with them. God, we're praying that you are alongside them today. Be with each of those who are on our special request list, Jerry and Jim and Allie, Woody and Amy and Lori, Cindy and Toby and Toby's daughter who's having surgery. We pray for uh, Jill's cousin whose fiance is in rehab and they're supposed to be married this weekend. We pray for that situation. May she be recovered um, so that she can, they can have the wedding and she can be free of her illness. We pray for that friend of Kimberlyn's whose boyfriend's in the hospital and not doing well. We lift them up today. We lift up all of those facing these difficult circumstances. We pray for Connie and her family as they mourn the loss of Rich. We pray for the family of Norma Rager and Alyssa and the whole family as they are adjusting to life now without Norma. God, we are praying today that you are with us to guide us in life through all that we face. We recognize that each of us carry within us prayers and concerns, things that we are struggling with, And we pray that you help us to navigate those, Lord. May you help us to find a way forward through all of the difficulties of life. May you continue to be that bright light that leads us down the path that you have set for us. God, be a blessing to each of us. Help us to uh, live out our lives as good disciples, spreading your word. And be that thing that gives us motivation each day to go forward. God, we pray all of this together now in Jesus' name. Amen.
Our first lesson this morning is our verses 12 through 17 of Psalm 90. So teach us to count our days that we may gain a wise heart. Turn, O Lord, how long? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad as many days as you have afflicted us and as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be manifest to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. O oh, prosper the work of our hands. Our gospel reading this morning is coming out of the book of Mark, Mark chapter 10, verses 17 to 31. As he was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt before him and asked him, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. You shall not defraud. Honor your father and mother. He said to him, well, Teacher, I have kept all of these since my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said, You lack one thing. Go. Sell what you own and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come follow me. When he heard this, he was shocked and went away grieving, for he had many possessions. Then Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it will be for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. And the disciples were perplexed at these words, but Jesus said to them again, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were greatly astounded and said to one another, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For mortals it is impossible, but not for God. For God, all things are possible. Peter began to say to him, Look, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus said, Truly I tell you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or fields for my sake or for the sake of the good news who will not receive a hundredfold 
now in his, this age houses, brothers and sisters, mother and children, and fields with persecutions, and in the age to come eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last will be first. The word of God to the people of God. We talked about this a little bit with the youth up front, but you know, does everyone here understand what it means when I talk about a leap of faith? We all, we all understand that, right? You, you've heard the expression used, I'm sure in many different contexts, what it's most commonly used for is describing uh, something that's a big hurdle that you have to overcome. There's something in front of you that um, is keeping you from taking this next step forward, and you have to get past it. And once you get past it, uh, things start to roll, things start to get going again, but it takes a leap of faith to go forward. And we know that taking a step into the future, whatever that future may be, can take a leap of faith. Whether you are starting your first day of school for the new year, or uh, going out on a first date with someone, uh, quitting your job and starting your own business, selling everything, whatever it may be, Jesus is asking that you take a leap of faith. He's asking them to take a leap of faith, to, to follow Jesus, to trust in God, and to take a leap of faith um, is difficult. And to take a step into the future is difficult. And that last example is what exactly Jesus is telling them to do today um, because he needs them to take a step into the future. He needs them to take a step forward beyond their understanding of the world as it is and into this new world that he's trying to create. Jesus wants them to leave the old behind and go into the new, and they have to take a leap of faith to do that because they only know what they know. And so we're introduced in our passage to a man who approaches Jesus um, and at first, that's all we know about him. He's just a man. That's all it says. Um, in Luke, he is a ruler. And in Matthew, he is young. That is the things that are attached to him. But Mark simply says a man. That's just all he is. He's a man who approaches him, and he has a lot of possessions. We know that to be true about him as well. Traditionally, Christians look at him as the young ruler. That's the, 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 the word that we use for him. Um, and him, this, this man, uh, thinking, you know, he has everything he could ever want. I've got everything. I've done everything right. I mean, everything's golden for me. Um, he asked Jesus this important question. You know, he says, good teacher, well, what else do I need to do so that I can inherit eternal life? What are these, you know, I've done all these things, but what's left? What else do I got to do to get this eternal life that I hear you talking about? Now, Jesus uses the same thing he uses on many people where he tries to turn it back towards him, flip the question, you know, get him to think a little bit. Um, he reframes the question in the terms of the kingdom of God rather than the language of eternal life. And once the man leaves after this discussion, Jesus then turns to his disciples and declares to them the same thing, how hard it's going to be for them to enter the kingdom of God. Now, it's important to pay attention to the series of questions Jesus has been asking leading up to this point. He's been dealing with divorce, earning eternal life, all these other things. You know, there's questions that have been posed to him. And all of these questions that um, Jesus are taking and flipping to point to the inbreaking of the kingdom of God and this new behavior that is then required in response to that. He's saying that the kingdom of God is here, it's at hand, it's coming, it's forming. And in order for you to, to, to receive it, to have it, you've got to change the way you behave. The disciples who are normally set up as people who don't quite get it, they are usually set up as people who need a little bit of a nudge, they don't always understand, seem to kind of get what Jesus is saying here, and they ask him, okay, well, then who can enter the kingdom of God? You know, they're thinking like, okay, well, who... Who can actually meet these requirements? They seem to understand the difficulty of stepping into this future that Jesus is proposing. But taking a step back for a moment, this man approaches Jesus, and the disciples, we believe, are there witnessing this. So they witness this tense exchange between Jesus and this man. He leaves Jesus, it says, grieving, sorrowful, upset about something. It doesn't say what he was upset about, but something has made him upset. Something that Jesus said didn't sit well with him. Now, um, there's one way you can look at it. You can say, well, he's sorrowful because 
Now he realizes he has to go back and get rid of all his stuff. He loved his possessions, and now he's grieving that he's going to not have those. But he also could have been sorrowful, not because he wasn't going to have his stuff anymore, but he could have been sorrowful because he was leaving knowing that he was going to give them all up. You know, it could be where he, he was grieving because he's like, ah, oh, I guess I can't enter the kingdom because I'm not getting rid of any of my stuff. Or you could say, you know, oh, he's leaving knowing in his heart that he's going to go back and do it. And so he's grieving that decision he's made to let go of everything. You know, to, to give it all up, I'm sure that would be emotional. I'm sure I'd get emotional as well. And the disciples in this are starting to understand just how difficult it really is to follow Jesus. Just how much work it takes to completely give your life to him. And although this process isn't easy and it can be painful sometimes, that can't stop us, that can't be the reason we don't go forward. This man had a hurdle he had to overcome. He had a leap of faith he had to take so that he can start this transition, this new behavior, this new way of life that Jesus is commanding. But taking that first step is difficult, it's hard. You know, in our lives, I'm sure we can think of many scenarios that we are faced with in life that are hard to make that first step. It's hard to make that first, that first leap of faith <clears throat> because that new future is unknown, and the unknown is scary. We don't like going into situations that we're not in control over, that we can't predict the outcome, that we don't have full control over how everyone's going to respond, and so we, we hesitate and we don't do it. You know, we can think of, you know, attending that first AA meeting, how difficult that might be for someone, or you know, calling the marriage counselor, coming out as gay, or, or maybe hearing a call to ministry. You know, things like that are not easy to take that leap of faith and to go into it, and yet when you do, you are faced with quite a bit of circumstance in front of you. But all of those things take a leap of faith to get you going, to get you on the other side of whatever that hurdle is. And speaking of leaps of faith, I'm sure many of us here, probably all of us here, I'm going to venture to say every single one of us, including myself, um, has not parted ways with all of our possessions and our money. I think we all still have, you all drove here in a car, so you all have something. When we hear Jesus' command, go, sell what you own and give the money to the poor, then come follow me, how do we feel about that? Does that make us feel guilty? Do we feel like we're not being good Christians? Or do we make excuses? Well, do we say, you know, well, Jesus couldn't have meant all my possessions, right? I mean, he could have meant some of them, but all, like, come on, no. We could say, well, you know, back then, they didn't have as much stuff, so, you know, maybe it was a percentage. You know, for them, giving away 10% was like almost everything they had, but for us, 10% is easy. I can get rid of 10% of what I have. Well, you know, well, maybe it's because they could have handled living without stuff back then, but I can't handle living without, you know, there's a lot of ways we're going to try to flip this and approach this, and, you know, there's a lot of ways to approach it to, to figure out, what is Jesus saying here? Well, how does that apply to me? Because, Clearly, that seems a little difficult for me to do in, in our world today. We've got money on our minds day in and day out. Money rules the world. Am I going to make the bills this month? Do I have enough to save back for Christmas this year? Uh, what if my tires need to be replaced? What if I run over a nail? Well, what if I come down with an illness and I have to go to the hospital? What if I'm going to lose my job for a little while? I've got to make sure I have at least something for the offering plate on Sunday. There's a lot of things that go through our head week after week about money and money and money and money. And as I mentioned earlier, this new life in this new kingdom that Jesus is bringing forth is calling us towards a new behavior. The status quo of the, of the world must go away and this new thing must come in. We're being called to transform ourselves both in character and behavior, but with the burdens we face today, it's easy to feel like the disciples did and want to shout out, well, okay, then who can be saved anyway? It's easy to feel that way. Well, come on, who can actually meet that quota? How can we honestly do this? Now, as I was reading this week, I came across an article, uh, and, and I came across this author, David B. Howell, and he says, being in the company and presence of Jesus is a good first step. Character transformation begins with identification with Jesus. And identification with Jesus signifies that character change is not only a slow process, but also a relational process. 
This means that not only is this something we work on over time, it's something that we work on together as a collective. Jesus reminds us that we are not the only ones in this. We are not the only ones being called to this. You are not solely being called out compared to everyone else. Jesus wants us to do this in community with one another. And so Jesus is saying, okay, we got to change your character, change your behavior, sell your stuff, and then everything, you know, and, and trust because God, you know, with everything is possible. And so I'll give you what I think about it so that I can put you at ease today. Um, no, I don't think Jesus is saying per se in the same way that we are experiencing it, go and sell every single thing you have because that's the only way you can follow me. So um, don't put your houses up for sale today. Don't go sell your car. Don't go do any of that. But understand, there is still a change in behavior, a change that has to happen that Jesus is pointing us to. What I think it is important to notice in our passage, and can sometimes be overlooked maybe, but this man that was given to us in Mark, who, who posed this question in the beginning, we have to ask, what do we know about this man? What is it about him? What is it that we know about him? And the only thing we know is that he was a man and he had a lot of stuff. He had a lot of possessions. And I think that's important because Mark, as he was writing this, could have said a lot about this man. He could have tried to track down or he could have heard or known anything else about him. Yet Mark thought the only thing that was important for us to know was that he had a lot of possessions. He was not identified by his heritage, which is common in this time. You are, you know, James, son of Zebedee, or you are this, son of that. You are this, coming from the land of this. You know, there's a lot of ways in which people were described in this time. Yet he was described only by the fact that he had a lot of possessions. And because of that, we must assume that his possessions are what formed his identity. His possessions are what took control of his life. His possessions are who he was. That is the only thing we have to go on, and so that is what we think. Jesus had a problem with that. Jesus identified with this man that uh, someone who is only identified by what he has cannot be good. And to transform himself out of that identity into this new identity with God, he had to remove himself from those possessions which dominated his life. So we ask, what is your identity? This is a question that we've been asking over the past few weeks that we're going to continue to ask as time goes forward. Yeah, possessions are nice, money is nice, cars and phones and clothes and purses and all sorts of things are nice. But are they eternal? Are they long-lasting? At the end of the day, when God is knocking on your door, are you going to say, wait, i got to get my wallet? No. You're going to go. Jesus is preaching against the idolization of materials. Jesus is trying to show us how meaningless these possessions are in the eyes of God, and at their core, these things, of course, they're not evil or bad or, or, or harmful. It's rather how we perceive them and the level of hold they take on our lives. You know, the question is, do we have possessions, money, or are we defined by our possessions and money? Is it something we just have, or is it all that we have? We have to find out where the balance is. When it comes down to it, we've all been called by God to go out to serve the poor, to feed the hungry, to do what we can to lift up those around us, to clothe the naked, to shelter those in need. We are being called into this life of service for our fellow brother and sister in Christ. And that's what Jesus cares about as we go forward in life. Jesus doesn't care how many things we have or how many things we don't have. It's how our behavior shifts away from focusing on earthly things and focusing on godly things. So yes, I do think if there are things in your life that has overtaken you to the point that that's all that you care about, that is something you should try to remove. If there are things that are getting in the way of your service to God and to your neighbor, then yeah, those are things that need to be evaluated, and the, the balance needs to be reevaluated. Whatever this thing may be, possessions, money, whatever, we need to have a, a, a good balance between what God has called us into doing and what we are driven to do by earthly things. And yes, it all takes a leap of faith. It takes a leap of faith to trust God, that God is going to continue to be good and, and, and be with us and walk alongside us. But we are uh, reminded through Scripture and through tradition and through um, the stories we share with one another that God continues to be good, continues to walk alongside us, continues to show us love. And we pray each day that that continues in our own lives. 
And so rather than letting us be defined by just all this stuff around us, let us be defined by our service to one another, our service to God, our service to um, the greater good around us. Let that be the driving force that continues to uh, drive us forward each day as we try to live out a life of dedicated service to God, helping the world around us grow and be expanded and, and brought forward in this new love, this new kingdom that Jesus started um, as we shift and change and work towards um, what God hopes this world can become. Amen. This is now a time for any and all of us to respond in a public way on God's call in your life, whether that be a profession of faith, perhaps it's a transfer of membership from another church, whatever you're being called to do this morning, please do so as we all stand together and sing our invitational hymn, Seek Ye First. It is such a blessing to join with you around this table. This is a table that, for me, is the perfect place to start as we talk about a change in behavior or a change in our hearts. It starts, ultimately, with Jesus, with coming close to Jesus. And we can do that no better place than this table. This is a table where these elements before us not only represent Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, but they represent a new beginning. They represent a new opportunity every day, every week that we partake to align ourselves closer with God and God's call in our lives. This is a time for us to lay down our burdens, our sins, our transgressions, those things that we want to change from before God and know that God's everlasting and loving arms are open and ready to embrace us. And so for each of you who have gathered here today, both online and in person, you're welcome at this table. This is a table set for all, ready for all. And so we remember that night that Jesus was betrayed as he took a loaf of bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, saying, this represents my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup, he blessed it, and he said, drink, for this is the new covenant in my blood. And for as often as you eat this bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until his return. Please join with us now in a prayer for the bread and for the cup. Loving God, you are there for us in all the times of our lives, the joyous times and the sad times, the easy times and the hurting times. When we come to times we are tested, help us to remember Jesus Christ, who bore a greater burden than we ever could, yet remained faithful. Through Jesus, we have discovered that you are a, grace of, a God of grace and a God of mercy. Bless the bread we eat now as a sign of that grace and mercy. Guide us by your spirit, Lord, so we might be faithful to you as you are faithful to us. Amen. God of eternal love, we have heard your word for us. We have sung your praise we have opened our hearts in prayer. Now we gather at your table to drink this cup. As we lift this cup for your blessing, let us find in it a sign of your compassion, a reminder of the lifeblood of Jesus Christ that was poured out for us. 
as we drink this cup, help us to remember that because Christ died, we live. Help us also to realize that we worship a living Christ who gives us the power of life. We pray that you will dedicate us to be your loving, serving people. Amen. Amen. I invite you to please join with me now in that prayer that was taught to us by our Lord and Savior. Our, our Father, Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The elements are before you. Please join with us now in this holy meal. Amen. And now I'd invite you to please stand together and sing our closing hymn, Go in Peace. It has been a blessing to be in worship with you today. Before I let you go, just a reminder, if you go through your bullets and you'll see there's a lot going on. Um, we do need someone for Coffee Connection next Sunday. We'll probably need someone for a youth lunch next Sunday. Those are a couple things you can sign up for. Looking ahead, we have um, on the 16th, Nelda's party out at Nel her house. We have the Hobo party on the 24th. Loaves and fishes, church board, all sorts of things coming up. So keep track of all that. Put it on your calendars. Make note of it. Uh, look forward to the Advent season that's coming. If you want to participate in the worship committee, have some say in that, come meet us at Benny's at 8 a.m. Uh, on Saturday, and we'll be discussing Advent in this coming season. Um, and Ken is waving at me to tell you to wave at the camera as you leave, I, I guess. That's what he's saying. I think that's what he's telling me. Anyway. Saying hi to our online people. Uh, it has been a blessing to be with you. I hope that God may bless and keep and preserve you. God may give you strength, love, and happiness this week as you go forward, as you learn to uh, follow God's call in your life and, and shed the love of God to those around you. Amen.